Okay. Hi, my name is Katrina Leandre, and tonight I'm going to discuss postmortem care. So this is the disclaimer. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion picture videotapes or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the text belong solely to the author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individuals. So postmortem care. All right, so nurse's role. What's our nurse's role? What's our what are our nursing interventions? This is a shroud kit, guys. So one thing I want you guys to focus on is the shroud kit. No one wants to see their family members in the shroud kit. Okay, this is very, very important. There are levels to postmortem care, and I'm going to discuss them with you throughout the lecture. All right, so the related content. Explain the procedure and reason for postmortem care to the family as appropriate. All right, and you want to encourage questions. You want the family member to ask you questions, and you want to answer them as they arise. Okay? So, care of body after death. The nurses provide postmortem care when a client dies. Dignity and sensitivity to the recently deceased individuals should be maintained. And all postmortem care must be consistent with the client's religious or cultural background. So, it has to be consistent with the client's religious or cultural background. So, this is something that we definitely need to know as a nurse. It is important that care is provided as soon as possible to prevent tissue damage or disfigurement of the body. But we never, ever, ever want to rush the family. Ask the practitioner guys or other designated team member to establish the time of death and determine if the practitioner has requested an autopsy. So this is something that you have to do as a nurse. You have to remember before you start removing tubes, before you transport the client to the morgue, guys, you have to call the practitioner, let them determine the time of death, you tell them the time of death, and you have to ask the, the nurse practitioner or the physician, is this patient a coroner's patient? Does this patient require an autopsy? Remember, guys, the time of death is very important. It has to go on the death certificate, okay? And you have to make sure that you are aware or you ask the physician, is this patient a coroner's case? Does this patient require an autopsy? So determine if the patient has first-person consent. Is listed in the, do the donut the donate life registry, or if his or her surrogate has been asked about organ and tissue donation. Now, this will be with a transplant um, representative. So um, we provide therapeutic communication, but this is definitely something that we need to know. We need to know if the patient is going to donate organs. So, guys, remember, this is something that we have to know as nurses. We have to know if our patient is in the um, donate organ registry. All right? So, donate life registry, guys. If the patient is enrolled, this is something that we definitely have to know. We have to provide therapeutic communication because, remember, we're not trained in this area. So, we have to get the transplant rep representative right away. All right, organ donation, guys, this is a serious, serious thing. So for nurses, we provide therapeutic communication, and we have to make sure that we contact the transplant represent representative right away. So determine if organ tissue donation, permission for autopsy, obtaining death certificate, 
and the client's family is now the nurse's primary focus. So this is definitely when the patient dies, guys, we make sure that we are providing therapeutic communication to the family member. We're meeting their needs. Okay, and we're also assessing if the patient is an organ donor. Um, we may have to let the family know about the autopsy. Okay, this is something that you have to um, be aware of. If the physician tells you yes, you have to let the family member know and let them know the physician will explain it further. And obtaining death certificate, guys, that's really important. Um, that's, this is why we have to know the time. And we have to know the physician that's going to sign the death certificate as well. And remember, the client's family is now the nurse's primary focus now. So the nurse, is, the family, the nurse is going to attend to the family's needs. You have to be therapeutic. You have to be present. You have to be patient for the, with the family. Always, always respect any cultural or religious, any type of social practices, guys. All right. Remember, cultural, religious, and social practices. We have to respect that as nurses. Now, nurses grief. So we go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance as well. We go through the stages of grief. We go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance as well. It's okay. Okay. We are allowed to do that. You know, we are very close to our patients. Sometimes we take care of our patients for months at a time. And we also have to be aware of letting go. All right, so nurses must allow themselves to grieve. Coping with death as a nurse, we have to allow ourselves to grieve because we go through the grief process as well. Underlining principles. Nurses must allow themselves to grieve as well, especially if they have cared for the client for an extended period, must be able to let go and find help. Coping mechanisms for letting go. All right. We have to have some coping me mechanisms for letting go. All right. You have to be debriefed as well. So remember, we go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. All right, we go through the stages of grief as well. So one thing that we can do to help let go, to assist in letting go, attend funeral services, write letters of condolences to family, seek support from colleagues, and stress management professional counseling may be necessary. So managing stress, meditation, journaling that helps, Conflict resolution skills. All of these things, guys, help manage stress. Nurses and grief. Emotional attachment occur with patients, guys. So you have to develop effective coping strategies. And you may have to let go, um, start letting go by attending the funeral. You can communicate in writing to the family. You can attend debriefing sessions, use your stress management techniques, and talking with a professional counselor. Now, preparing the body for viewing, all right? Facial hair, denture care, and tube removal. So, preparing the body for viewing. Identify cultural and religious beliefs first. Before you touch the patient, before you start any postmortem care, make sure you know the cultural and religious beliefs. Be sensitive to beliefs when providing postmortem care. Be respectful and all family members to assist with care if cultural religion requires. It's okay. Okay, if the cultural religion requires it, allow the family member to help you. Family viewing. When the family is viewing the body, maintain privacy, shave facial hair if applicable, remove all tubes and dirty linens except organ donor or a coroner case. So if there's a coroner case, guys, or an organ donor, 
then you don't want to remove anything. You don't want to remove the tubes. Okay. But if that isn't the case, remove all tubes and dirty linen. Okay. So remove all tubes and dirty linens except if organ, organ donor or a coroner case. So in this situation, you would definitely remove any of the tubes. Remove the tubes. All right. Remove personal belongings and give to family. Clean body and align on pillow. Apply fresh linen and gowns and brush and arrange hair. So this is for family viewing. All right. Apply fresh linen and gown. Remove all tubes, all dirty linen, except if organ donor or coroner case. Remove all tubes. All right. Nursing skill. Provide denture care according to a facility agency. You can put the you can put the dentures back in. Once you provide denture care, you put the dentures back in so the family can see the patient with the dentures in. Position sheets below chin with arm out or per facility agency policy. Remove excessive equipment from the room. Provide, provide a calm environment for the family and dim lights if possible. So remember denture care. You can put the dentures back in so the family member can see the patient with the dentures in. You can remove them once the family leaves. All right? Calm and dim room. So family viewing. Allow family to visit with the body. Honor the decisions. Don't rush. And clarify who is, take, who is taking the client's belongings. Okay, and I'm going to mention these belongings a lot. So it's a big deal. Clarify who is taking the client's, the patient's belongings. After the family has viewed the body. So you want to apply the name tags, usually a wrist, right big toe, and shroud. Be sensitive to feelings of visitors and staff during transport of body to morgue or funeral home. And this is just a visual. All right, a visual of a shroud room. Now, newborns, postmortem care for newborns. One thing I want you guys to focus on is collect mementos. So you'll collect the ID bracelet, the footprints, the lock of hair, the photos, the cord, clamp for the family, and you'll allow the family to take these items home. So collect mementos. Special consideration. So now we're going to talk about organ donation and autopsy. So if a patient is an organ donor, maintain ventilatory and cardiovascular support for organ retrieval. All right. Um, discuss concerns, process with the family in private. So we're basically providing therapeutic communication and you want to refer the family to the transplant coordinator because this, pa this particular um, person is trained they know what to say to the family. They know the process in and out. And be sensitive to cultural and religious influences. So remember this. Maintain ventilatory and cardiovascular support for organ retrieval. And remember the transport um, transplant coordinator will help you, will assist you in speaking to the family. All right? Cardiovascular support for organ retrieval. So autopsy, the physician, the physician is usually responsible to discuss need for autopsy with the family. So you can answer questions, you can reinforce questions, but the physician will explain to the family. All right, so just keep in mind that the physician will explain to the family. Always identify cultural and religious beliefs of family members, guys. Always be respectful of culture and religion. And documentation. If worse comes to worse, you know the SOAPY format. Subjective, objective, assessment, planning, intervention, and evaluation. 
So this, these are all the things you have to document. Who pronounced death, time of death, organ donation, and there we go again. What was done with personal articles? That's a big deal. You need to document that. Who was notified? What decisions were made? Location of the ID tags? Time, body, left facility. Documentation. Time, the therapies, okay, responsibilities of care can be delegated appropriately. Who provided the postmortem care? You can add that. And prepare a body for viewing. Who prepared the body for the viewing? Make sure you document all these things. Personal art articles left on the body, guys. Dentures or glasses or jewelry taped to the skin or tubes and lines left in place. You want to document that. Appearance and condition of the patient's skin. Action taken to secure valuables and personal belongings. Who did you give the items to? Who did you give the articles to? And that's it, guys. Thank you. The PowerPoints will be in the description box below. Have a good night.